Alright, programming 12. We are going to get started on loading in this world. Um, I am basically going to be making an F box wherever there's a black pixel in our physical world. That's the goal of this lesson. I want to write code that will read through this image pixel by pixel and create F boxes in the corresponding space in my world where I would see a black pixel. Uh, or a green pixel and we'll just actually just anytime we see a non-white pixel I think we'll just we'll just put it in so this image I will I haven't quite decided if I'll make available or if I'll ask you to draw your own I'll let you know in, in class uh, it won't hurt to have this one available but uh, it's pretty easy to draw your own uh, and the main thing is just to double check that your colors are consistent. Whenever, whatever color, um, sorry, uh, image editing program you're using, just make sure your colors match sort of your definitions. Like I have um, some numbers in here that I'm using. If they're even off by a slight bit, you won't read in that pixel. You will read in something else. I think the easiest way is just to have uh, a white uh, for now. And if your background is white, then anything that's not white will be loaded in and like that can just be the white. Of course, if your background isn't, you know, all like, you know, six F's kind of white, then uh, that, that could also be a problem because then you'd load in pixels everywhere. But we'll troubleshoot these things as we go. I think it'll be fine. So I have some code here and I, I recommend you take it down. I actually don't need you to write down, you know, all these things. I might, um, you know, I guess, I guess you might as well take down at least like the important details. You might have forgotten how to put in some physical stuff. So here I am just importing. Physica, excuse me, and then we have uh, my world. I got my color palette, and again, that's going to be quite important because we're going to read specific colors from our image, and that will represent boxes, uh, F boxes. I have my image file here, and that should be in your sketch folder. Uh, this is the variable that will hold it, and then grid size is going to be the size of the F boxes that I load in. So that will be uh, an important. Uh, number. We'll be able to change this to change the size of our F boxes as we go. Okay, so next is set up in a you know good old size. We know how to how that works. Uh, we got to initialize Physica, and then we're going to make the world itself. Uh, in this case, I'm putting in numbers in the constructor of the world. Uh, these numbers are a top left x and y coordinate of the world, and this is a bottom y. And I've just like given it some big numbers uh, to sort of spread out the world a bit. It doesn't really change things too much. Just make sure that the boundaries of our world won't get in the way of our map for now. You can change these numbers to be whatever you want. Basically, outside of the of these this boundary, like that kind of creates a box, right? The left top left and bottom right corner. Outside of that box, Physica doesn't calculate physics. So things will just like get stuck there and not move. Uh, so I just want to make sure we have some space to work with. Uh, I'll set gravity to, you know, whatever this number is. And then, um, so that's, I guess, pointing down, you know, roughly Earth-like gravity. And then I'm going to load that image. So that's the image that's right here, map.png. And, you know, I'll probably make that available in the, um, in your folder, uh, in your uh, Teams. <laughs> Words are hard. Uh, next I have, oh, draw. It just draws and, and does physics. So it draws the world. X physics. So that's that's all we got there. So feel free to get that set up right now. Probably won't take you too long to type that up. And once you're done, we'll get started on uh, taking this map and loading in boxes. All right. So to get started, uh, we need to know a couple of key functions that p images have. Uh, one of them will be map dot get, and we can give it like a number. So this. Uh, get function when you say map.get map of course is a p image right so this is something that the p image class gives us uh, as a behavior function so um, this gets the color at these this coordinates like the pixel at one comma three and it starts counting from zero by the way so this is zero zero would be the top left hand uh, pixel um, that gives us the color and so we can get that number and decide, oh, what is this value here? Uh, you know, what is this number? Is this white? Is this black? And then make a decision if we will build an F box in the corresponding space in our world. So map.get will be really useful. Also map dot um, width and map dot height will be very useful. That'll tell us 
how long and how tall the image is. And uh, these numbers, he's oh, saying, uh, I don't know if that's actually a problem. I guess I don't have a semicolon. That's not the real problem. Uh, they, these aren't even valid statements anyways. Um, so map.width and map.height will tell us the width and height of our image. And that'll tell us like, you know, if it's 50 by 50 as mine is, you know, that'll tell me how far I have to go as I process it. Okay, so we're gonna make a, a while, oh, sorry, a for loop that will drive our, um, our get function across a particular uh, row. So let's do that first. We're just gonna process a single row of pixels in, in the map. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a for loop. Ooh, that's a one way to spell for. I'm gonna make a variable called x because I want to process across a row. So it's gonna be my x coordinate that's changing. So we're gonna say int x equals uh, zero because it starts at that side. And I'm going to keep on going while x is less than or equal to uh, the width. Uh, or no, it's just less less than or equal to. Oh, now I'm forgetting. <laughs> just a sec. Yeah, it's just it's just less than. Uh, it's going to go from 0 to uh, 49, I believe. Although we could try it. We could see either one. So map.width. And then, oh, we got, of course, uh, x++. plus plus. So the x++ plus plus is what moves us from sort of one pixel to the next across the row. We want to start at the beginning and end at the end of the row. And what we can do is we can uh, read in. So we can get color c equals map.get um, x comma, and we'll just do zero for now. We'll just do the first row. And then we can ask, hey, if that color equals black, then we can make a um, an f box we can say um, f box I'll just make a generic name for it like B equals new f box and uh, usually we give it a width and height so I would say uh, you know whatever the numbers are instead of using just hard-coded numbers I would like to use grid size so that I could just change it up here later on so I'll say uh, grid size uh, grid size and then I want to position this in the right place so I want to say b dot set position and I will place it at I guess um, x times grid size and then it's just zero right now we're only using um, the first column so like I could put zero but I'm gonna put zero times grid size uh, just so I don't have to like remember to do that later on. Uh, eventually we'll have zero be a variable that will move down as well. So that'll help us to, to not forget. Why are we timesing by grid size? Well, if we're placing, say the block size is 32 by 32, we don't want to put those at like pick at x zero, one, two, three. We want to put them at zero and then skip 32 to put the next one at 32 and then 64 and then 96 and so on. So although we're counting up by one in the map because those are you know separated uh, pixels that are width one by one, uh, we're gonna build a world that is you know 32 by 32 or whatever number we want. So we just multiply that by grid size to uh, for when we actually build our F boxes. And then of course we will say world.add b. Oh, and one other thing, we should probably make them static or they'll all just fall down. So B dot set static true, and we can set grabbable to false if we want to, but I'll just I'll just start that off that way. Okay, so that's the first step. So this is our for loop that will load in a single row. But now we want to make a for loop that will repeat this to go down to the next row and the next row and the next row and so on. So now I can take this loop and stick it inside of another for loop. So I'm going to make a for loop that's going to involve the y variable. And I'm going to start it at zero because that's how that works. And I'm going to go as long as y is less than map.height. I'll do y plus plus. And I'm going to put a brace here and then at the very bottom of my loop as well. Um, so if I press command T, I should see you know, this brace will match up with that one. And we can see that this for loop is inside the other for loop. So basically how this will work is that this for loop will run across the entire row 
When it's finished, it'll go back to the outer for loop, which will move us down to the next row. And then this for loop will run us across an entire row. And we'll just kind of keep on repeating that over and over again. And that'll process the entire thing. So the only thing we're missing though is this Y variable. Now we can plug in here and here. And so this nested for loop is a fantastic pattern for processing a grid structure like an image. We'll do across a row and then move down to the next row, process that row, move down to the next row, process that row, and so on. And that should produce something, some kind of world. Well, let's see, does it work? I'll run the program. We'll see if we see something. Ah, uh, look at that. Now, we don't have a character that can like move around to explore this world, but we can see that, you know, it, something looking like the pattern that we created is there. So that's pretty great. Uh, and, I, and I guess we could, you know, shift with translate to move around to see things. But, you know, it's a pretty good start to see that we're definitely loading in. We're not sure if it's loaded in everything on the other side, but, you know, pretty good beginning uh, to see. Uh, we'll see that zero, zero is sort of here, um, you know, loading us uh, in that. But I suppose we could uh, shift things over with a subtraction just to just to kind of analyze things. But that's fine because eventually we'll have a character uh, in there. So there it is. So now I guess um, the next step would be to create your own uh, world. So make a simple world with some platforms. And I'll post in Teams what a good website is to do that. If you're using a PC, you could just use paint. That would be fine. And then just use like very specific colors. Like make sure you know what the hex value of your color is in the editor. Uh, if you're not, if you're using a Mac or you just would rather use a web editor, uh, post in Teams a good choice for pixel art editing. All right, thanks everybody. Good luck.